Hi. Hi. How's it going? I'm all right. Can you see? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, such little people with so many big feelings happening. Um, so when I first saw that film, I assumed it was in direct response to the anti-trans legislation that was happening in this country. But in fact, you started it way before that. Can you talk about that process? I, I tried to make this film two years before it happened, um, but it was impossible to, one, um, get, a, get a school who will allow us to put together a story that involves a crime, um, I guess that we can avoid, but we're not really working on that very hard. So uh, it was really hard to get past people reading the script and understanding why we needed to tell the story. Um, so by when the bill of the washrooms um, happened, I just sort of forced things to happen and I got into huge political debates and I kind of had to threaten to go public in order to make this happen. So can you be a little more specific? <laughs> so here I go. <laughs> right. So I recall you telling me that this was a you've been looking, you kind of been exploring your own identity and situation, and you're thinking, I want to tell this story as an ally, as an advocate, and through that process, you came to the story, and then you wanted. So take it from there. So you approached the story. All right. Okay. I wanted to make a film, and um, I needed to pull from. I guess I went from what was closest to me, what was occupied in every day of my life. And um, I was looking for trans content. I wasn't really aware of where I was at at that moment. Um, but, but I had this need to understand and to, to, to see where things were at and what needed to be done. I just knew things were wrong. And because I came from that, I came from being very transphobic. Uh, and now I kind of understand why. Um, but so, so I, I was reading and I saw that this exact episode of the pants being jammed down happened to a four-year-old in the States. And I couldn't sleep well since then. I, even though I have been subject to these kind of things all my life, every time that I'm in a public place something happens. Um, the idea of such a crime happening to a four-year-old and what does, what that does to you? Um, I, I just knew that I needed to, to tell people that this happened because I don't think you can imagine something like that. Um, so I wanted to work with uh, the youngest people I could, um, and and I met Jonah, uh, the big actor. I couldn't find a gender non-conforming kid and any talent agency or anything like that. They do not exist. So I put a call out and, and I got one parent that was like, my kid lives this struggle and I want you to meet. And Jonah had never acted before, um, but when we got together and we talk about our experiences, I, I knew that I needed to give him the time and uh, the tools to be able to tell their story. Um, and. We tried for two years and I sent the script to every single uh, school board that I could. And as soon as they read it, they would say no. So um, when the bill happened, I decided to approach a school board without the script. And I got approval to shoot. Uh, uh -huh. One week before, I sent the script. And the school suddenly wasn't available for a year. And so I was pissed off. <laughs> And I was like, it's all this shit. Like, kids are killing themselves. And we need to do something about it. And in Ontario, uh, schools are uh, starting to change, to, to adapt to, like, to have the option of the gender, uh, gender neutral bathroom. And I just couldn't understand why, if we are working on it, we can talk about it. Why can't we all get together and explain to people that are not there yet why we need it? Um, so this school woman called me and I was like, the school was available until like, you read the script, so this is absolutely personal. Short story, 
we ended up crying on the phone. She was like, I'm not a, a bad person. And I was like, then you didn't just fucking add like a good one. <laughs> this is about <laughs> social justice and we need it. Um, and in a matter of 30 minutes, they wait for the rental fee was, the, the, the rental fee was waived and we were allowed to, to shoot the film uh, uh, when we played it. So you gotta tell people to fuck off and you gotta tell people to be responsible. We all have power, um, and I don't think that without Jonah's uh, interest in telling this story, because we, he will email me every two weeks. I was asked to cut my hair, can I do it, will that affect? And this happened for two years. Mm. The reason of this film happening is that kid, the kid that this crime happened, and the change we need to see, we all have to fight for it, and as long as we force people to see they're wrong, they're willing to change, so we need to keep doing that. Can you talk a little bit about the collaboration with Jonah? With Jonah? Well, it was... It was um, Jonah is the kid that plays Charlie. And this um, is Charlie. I wasn't named Charlie by then. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's all about lack of creativity. Um, <laughs> Jonah, um, we sort of got together, we, we, we talk a lot about our experiences. We wanted uh, illegally sneak into his uh, school on a weekend. Uh, and, and we went through where he lives and we explored all, all those situations. Uh, because he thought that my script wasn't mean enough for his experience. Neither the kids that were with him um, on, the, on, the, on the bathroom they were like, we need to edit this, this is too soft. <laughs> Kids are way more mean. Oh, right. um, so a lot of that came with them. It was, it was basically them teaching me how cruel we have gotten since I went to school. Um, and, and they were incredible, and both uh, Jonah and, and uh, Hunter, the bully, they are uh, pretty much every day making a post about it. They are bringing it to their schools, they are talking to people. Um, they have been involved from the very beginning until now. I, I got an email from Parker today, take a picture for me, I can't believe I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, I can see how these kids um, took this experience and made it their own, and now they are on their own journey to, to change the people they live around. And my last question for you. My last question for you is, and you talked about wanting to bring this to schools and share it with the students. Can you talk about what that process has been like? That's why I make this film. I think that we need to start talking to young, younger people, the youngest ones. Because yes. mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. they're the ones that are just observing and learning. Yes. So they need to know what works and what doesn't. And the re I, I, know, I know that seeing this is really hard. I, I crunch every time I see it um, for different reasons. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, I I got lost. What happened when you asked the schools if you could film oh, the film? Yes. So I, I my, my, my idea to, 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 to do this, like I wanted to see as hard as it is to see it, we need to see what's happening. I don't think that any of you could think that someone at four years old could experience this and that's the reason why we need to talk about it. Um, I wanted to, I, and I want, and I will work on going to schools and, and, and getting people to see this because I think that what, make, what disconnects us from each other is the fact that we don't have the same journey, that we don't experience the same things. But if after today you know that this happened to a four-year-old, maybe you will have conversations outside of the washrooms with your friends and with the people that cannot understand. I think that we need to educate people and I think that we need to start at schools because those kids are not, we, schools don't care about humanity. They don't care about your, your well-being. They care about math and shit. Uh, but I think that once Jonah's friends watch this, they will probably be more compassionate with him. We tried to bring uh, this film to Jonah's school. He went super proud to talk to the principal about what he's done and 
we're gonna be screening at CBC, the main broadcaster in Canada, and he he wants and just he, he just wants to tell everybody about that, and we tried to make a little screening for his classroom, mm. and we were not allowed. We were only allowed, which I said no, thank you, uh, to share a link so people could watch it, and I said, well, just wait the fuck out, and it will be on TV. But that is the thing. We are not allowing these kids to exist. Jonah, after we shot this film, has gone through really terrible stuff at school. This is a kid that, younger than 12 years old, he knows what it is to want to be dead every day. And that is why I think we need to head to schools, and we need to talk to those people who have no reference of what being a human is. Or they are pure and we just need to avoid them to be contaminated. I guess that is the point. Yeah, I, mean, I think both you and Jonah did such a great job. Um, I think he's a great actor. And he was eight years old when you met him, right? Yeah. Um, and I think the directing was fantastic. You know, the moment at the end where he pees on the, you know, like, oh God, yeah, of course that's gonna happen. You know, he had to pee so badly and then he's completely humiliated, of course. Um, so it was very tender and, and, and sweet, really good directing. So good job. Thank you.